So I am back with yet another First Descendant video and today guys we go over some of the changes that are coming next Tuesday with Hotfix 1.0.7 which they dropped earlier today. Some incredible changes here, there's probably going to be more incorporated into this Hotfix before it's released uh, Tuesday which is August 13th. Today we're getting into it all. How's it going guys? My name is DPJ and I'm giving away Ultimate Descendants or the equivalent in Calibre. To win it's as simple as this, drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below and make sure you're subbed. The more I see you on my channel, the more of a chance you have of winning. Winners are picked and announced at the end of the week, so good luck. Also join my Discord link down below for even more giveaways. Okay, so they dropped this earlier today. I woke up to the notification on my phone via Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it. And it's quite interesting. So let's get into it guys. Greetings Descendants, this is the director of the first Descendant. Today I am here to share a preview about Hotfix 1.0.7. We're aiming to release Hotfix 1.0.7 on Tuesday August 13th as we need additional time to verify some issues. In the meantime I'd like to share some key updates in this Hotfix. Firstly, we are adjusting the options in the Infiltration Operation and Hard Mode. The grappling hook disabled and jump disabled options will be removed from the selection list. Additionally, the select all option will be no longer be deselected when changes are made after selecting all options. Now I'm not entirely sure what they mean here because the translation is a little off. What I feel he means by this is when you select all and you see that percentage highlighted where we're normally aiming for over 200% I think if you spend another 1000 gold coins and rotate this they won't be automatically deselected so you won't have to highlight all again or select all again to see the percentage going into this mission will offer so yeah that's what, what I feel this means here but I could be completely wrong who knows they go on to say, moreover, we're planning further improvements uh, for the infiltration operation hard mode in Season 1. These include removing occupation tasks and focusing more on eliminations. We're also replacing the random combination of options with preset selections and expanding matchmaking perimeters. So that does sound interesting, but we'll have to wait and see where they go with this one. Next, let's talk about content adjustments. We're going to add some extra time for you to choose the restart option after completing intercept battles, special operations and infiltration operations. For your preference, restart with squad and restart alone buttons will be provided. Now this is a great, great addition. I was sick and tired of having to return to Albion, travel back to the mission or even said boss because I took a little too long collecting my loot or selecting the right amorphous pattern material I wanted to use. So yeah. This is a great, great change. Additionally, we're making characters invincible when standing on hazardous areas after intercepts are done. Another great change. Making use of the reconstructed device more convenient. Yes, great, great change. The difficulty of the Frostwalker mechanism will be adjusted so you can enjoy this void intercept battle through public matchmaking more easily. Now, I'm very, very interested to see what they do with this one because it is a bit of a pain in the ass. So yeah, we will see guys, we will see. In special operations, AFK players will be moved automatically to the abort selection during the interim review. Also, monsters HP will be reduced and more ammo will be dropped easily in void fusion reactors. That's a great, great change too. Okay, so monster spawn intervals are shortened in void fragments at a poison attribute located at Echo Swamp, the derelict culvert. Okay, cool. We're also addressing the issue where weapon proficiency is not gained uh, for equipped weapons when using unique weapons, such as during Lunar Stage Presence. Okay, so I didn't even know that was an issue, but yeah, it makes sense that they change that. Lastly, we have a usability improvements. We will enhance your farming experience with several improvements. Sounds interesting. In Hotfix 1.0.7, we're adding a feature that allows you to quickly identify key information about your equipment by looking at icons in the inventory, okay, you'll be able to see how many ultimate options an item has without opening its tooltip and identify the attributes and arch types of reactors through icons. Additionally, we're speeding up the tooltip display to help you sort valuable items more efficiently. Cool. Okay, so one last thing. 
From previous patch notes, we've discussed plans to support build diversity. We noticed discussions in the community about whether socket types need to be assigned 11 times for each loadout page. Rest assured we aim to support build diversity in a more user-friendly manner. If you prefer to use the same socket type across the loadout pages 1, 2 and 3, your current setup will remain unchanged. Socket type assignments will only be required if there are different socket types for each loadout. I don't get this. I do not get this whatsoever. <laughs> It makes zero sense to me. I know, yes, we have translation issues here, but it doesn't make sense. What did they say? If we prefer to use the same socket type across the loadout pages, one, two, and three, yes, that makes sense. So if you have sockets applied to all of your module slots on page one or settings one, your current setup remained unchanged for pages two and three in regards to the socket types. And then they say socket type assignments will only be required if you want a different socket type for each loadout. Well, is that not exactly what it is in game now? This doesn't seem like a change to me. What I am hoping, and this is a feature I spoke about in my powers yesterday, who are also hardcore players of the first descendant. I mean, if we apply, let's say, in that settings tab one, we have a module socket applied to each module slot. In page two, the same module sockets are applied. But if we wanted to apply a different module socket to, to a slot which currently already has a module socket, it wouldn't overwrite it but at the same time that module slot will be represented by two individual two different module socket types so we could use two module types within the same socket and get a discount on that capacity that would be pretty cool or an even better change here would to be able to change the socket type on settings page two and three if a socket type is applied to a different socket type free of charge. This would be an incredible change. It's something I don't see them doing, but it would be absolutely amazing. Now, the problem with this is, I mean, applying socket types to your module slots, the grind back to 40 from a level zero is so repetitive and boring. I'm pretty sure almost every player out there is sick and tired of this. It's just a real boring play cycle of not to 40, not to 40, standing in that bunny cave for hours upon end, just leveling up. There needs to be a different, more fun way of leveling up or in regards to doing this, maybe when you apply these module socket types to your descendant or your weapons, it only drops you down 20 levels instead of resetting you back to a level zero. That would be great too. But yeah, we're gonna have to wait and see for them to further discuss what they mean here, because it is a little bit confusing. Okay, so they end with the first ascendant aims to be a long time beloved game. To achieve this, we've committed to improving the game in ways that resonate with you. We deeply appreciate everyone and our communities and we'll continue to strive to provide more enjoyable content. Thank you. So yes, guys, this is a hotfix that will arrive next Tuesday. We do need further information on said changes here to fully understand what's going on. But all in all, it does sound promising. Guys, tell me your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully, guys, I will see you on that next one.